Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lectures on uh, acoustic instabilities in aerospace propulsion. My name is Sujit and I will be delivering this class. Uh, so before um, I start off with the lecture, I would like to give a course outline. Um, so the course is dealing with uh, how there are instabilities that happen in uh, propulsion system or combustion systems in the industry and this is something which we usually do not deal with in a propulsion propulsion course. So usually in a propulsion course we talk about designing a propulsion system or a combustion system and those are basically uh, based on steady state uh, principles uh, rather than any instability analysis. But here, so you end up designing an engine or a system and then sometimes it goes unstable that is the engine develops very large levels of vibration and sound inside and create problems and may lead to destruction of the engine or mission failure and so on and such scenarios happen in real life and this course is to look at such phenomena. So the course starts with an introduction to uh, acoustics and how combustion driven oscillations occur and we will then do the derivation of the uh, wave equation. We will uh, then speak about solution to wave equation. First we will be talking about traveling wave solution and then standing wave solutions. Then we look at effect of inhomogeneous media on sound propagation that is in uh, real engines the temperature in the engine is not uniform it is different from uh, usual sound propagation in the atmosphere or something uh, where here the uh, temperature will be non-uniform. So we will look at the effect of non-uniformity or inhomogeneity of the media on sound propagation. Then we look at multi-dimensional acoustics so how does uh, sound propagate in a um, can type combustor or in a uh, how, how are the radial modes there how are the tangential modes happening and so on and so this much is the uh, basic acoustic part. Then we move on to looking at combustion instability first I will look at the fundamentals of combustion instability how it occurs and then we look at the basic principles we derive the equations that represent that describe combustion instability. We will speak about a Rayleigh criteria which is the classical criteria that explains whether uh, instabilities will occur or not. We will then look at instability in solid and liquid rockets, ramjets and gas turbine engines. Uh, we speak a little bit about pulse combustors and their use, uh, speak then about the uh, passive and active control of combustion instability. We will then see how we can do theoretical analysis of combustion instability and then we do model analysis which is the conventional technique for studying analyzing combustion instability and lastly we will look at the recent developments on non-model stability analysis. So basically you can see the course is split into two parts in the, uh, uh, the first part we are basically speaking about uh, classical acoustics. So we describe how waves are traveling in a medium how they get reflected, how they get transmitted and, and so on. So that is what is basically classical acoustics and in the second part we will specifically discuss thermoacoustic instabilities and their analysis. So this is what the course is and in today the first lecture we will speak about what causes the uh, instabilities and how uh, I will just give a very preliminary introduction about what causes instability and how, uh, how they are established in combustors and how they can be uh, suppressed. So this is the first lecture that is the origin and suppression about of uh, combustion driven oscillations. So as I mentioned the propulsion is usually taught as a steady state phenomena but in reality uh, all of the propulsion systems are designed based on steady state principles they are not uh, actually that steady because when the instability comes there will be loud level of vibrations and noise and the fluid mechanics will be unsteady and you would uh, end up having uh, serious uh, problems. Uh, so first question is what is thermoacoustic instability? Uh, this word thermoacoustic instability is also uh, referred to in uh, by some other people as uh, what is called combustion instability or thermoacoustics or uh, combustion dynamics. Uh, we will look at how common it is. In fact, it is quite common although people do not speak much about it. 
uh, it, it's there in uh, most engines, and some of the literature says that 50 percent of the solid rocket motors that are developed uh, have combustion instability problems. I'll speak about how we can eliminate it. Uh, so, I'll, uh, giving an introduction to this uh, uh, subject in this lecture. Uh, so, whenever you design a rocket, ramjet, an industrial burner, whatever, you design it, and then you go into test it, and then bang, you are struck with this instability problems, uh, and then. Uh, this is a completely new ball game, and you don't know how to deal with it. Uh, this is there; it was there. You must, if, if you looked at the uh, history of the Moon program, America's Moon uh, race to the Moon, uh, they used the F1 engine in the Saturn rocket, which had uh, serious instability problems, and America had to work hard to get over it. Uh, like that, uh, so many rockets have this problem, so many ramjets have this problem, so many. Uh, industrial burners have this problem, and usually this problem is identified only at the later stages of a program, and uh, uh, then it's very hard to fix it. So, uh, in this lecture, we look at the origin of combustion-driven oscillations and their suppression. Uh, so, in the first uh, part, we look at what is combustion instability. Then we look at mechanisms uh, that cause combustion instabilities. How exactly? these instabilities occur in various forms of uh, uh, various propulsive systems. And then we look very briefly on active and uh, passive control of instabilities. So, this is like an overview lecture, and then we will deal with each of these topics in a very serious manner, in a very elaborate manner. So, India is now expanding its power capability. We are, uh, I think we are about uh, doubling our power generation capabilities in every five or six years. So, we are now starting to use gas turbine engines to produce power. Uh, this, this, this was uh, this is commonly used in the western countries, but now India is adopting this also. We are having a uh, uh, aggressive uh, uh, aerospace program, we have uh, space programs, and we have jet engine programs, we have missile programs. All this, uh, uh, all, all, all this uh, uh, is powered by a common denomination that is the uh, combustion, and uh, these uh, combustors often have what is called combustion instability. What is shown in the slide is a, uh, a clipping from the Wall Street Journal if, uh, some years back, maybe about uh, 12 years back. So, uh, we uh, you know in the 80s, nitric acid rain was considered to be a serious problem, and everybody was trying to find uh, solutions for that. And then uh, the engineers and the scientists came up with the solution that we have to use uh, combustors which give low NOx, that is nitric uh, nitric oxide, NO, NO2 and NO. And the solution was to use Lean premix pre vaporized burners, LPP burners, and uh, these combustors were made and they were uh, brought to the field. And then what happened? They had instability. You can see that uh, the, the, uh, when the combustion instability occurred, loud amplitude of sound came inside the combustor, and a very large level of vibrations were set in. And you can see the, uh, uh, this is an article says turbine makers are caught in an innovation trap. So, in, when, when this instability occurred, you see the bolts were found to have cracked inside the spinning engines and uh, dangerous vibrations, heat shields came loose, uh, new ring burners hum loudly, uh, because the gas flames were flickering causing serious vibration, parts were coming loose, uh, nuts and bolts were coming loose and flying off and the engine had to be shut down. And it, to shut down this engine, it takes quite a long time, because they are very nice bearings. So, it takes half an hour to shut down and half an hour to restart. So, this is really a uh, 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 tremendous problem in the industry, and so when I, uh, when one of those engines that create uh, uh, that that's used to generate the power is shut down, it costs a lot of money, and this causes uh, a lot of revenue loss to the power companies. In fact, power companies ask the uh, uh, turbine companies, the gas turbine companies, which make these engines, to pay for this power loss that is happening due to shutdown because of instability. So the gas turbine companies um, suffer very severe, severely because of this. Of course, then this cost is built into their uh, pricing. So, in general, uh, uh, billions of dollars are lost because of this problem, and uh, it's a very serious problem in uh, in the uh, gas turbine industry, particularly in the recent times when gas turbines are used for uh, power production uh, in ground-based gas turbine engines. Uh, also, in the aerospace program, it's a really a very uh, serious and plaguing problem. Uh, uh, in rockets, we have really high performance, but you can imagine. In a rocket, typically in a solid rocket motor, the mean pressure in the rocket would be about 60 bar. And even if you have like a 1 percentage oscillation or 2 percentage oscillation, we still have about a bar oscillation, and which is really loud. And uh, these rockets are not designed 
typically with any of those considerations, but they are designed for performance uh, and uh, incredibly performing machine can have a, a severe uh, instability problems and can uh, have loud levels of noise inside this rocket, whether it is solid rocket or liquid rocket or it can happen in a ramjet or a jet engine. This can lead to severe vibrations that can have very severe structural problems and we can have increased uh, heat transfer to the walls, which can actually create problems to the walls. You can have altering of the burn rates, we can have thrust oscillations, very large thrust oscillation which can actually take a toll on the vehicle. Uh, the also, even if the oscillations are very low amplitude, the oscillations can actually uh, uh, perhaps uh, cre create damage to the satellite uh, uh, due to the, low, the electronics which cannot take this kind of loud vibrations or some of the systems in the rocket may actually lock on to this frequency. For example, the navigation system may actually vibrate at this frequency and may completely get damaged. So, any of these possibilities can lead to a uh, serious uh, compromise of mission and you can have a mission failure. Uh, in fact, uh, those of you who studied history of the US space program would know that F1 engine had very severe instability problems and America U pumped in lot of dollars to uh, fix this problem. The Mars lander originally was designed with no aluminum, so that uh, we do not want to pollute the Mars environment, but the lander uh, had very serious instability problems and in the end they used a lot of aluminum in the, uh, in the, in the rocket, 18 percent actually to uh, shut down the instability because the instability problems was really compromising the program itself. So, what causes combustion instability? Combustion can be unsteady phenomena, combustion also makes sound. In fact, even if you see dry leaves burn, you will see that they crackle and make sound. So, this uh, the sound that is produced by combustion, if, if you look at any burner, you go to a tea shop and look at the burner, the burner actually makes uh, hums and makes sound. This uh, in, in general in power plants or in engines, these, uh, uh, these uh, flames uh, or the combustion is usually happening in an enclosed environment. So, what happens is the sound that is generated by the combustion, they travel to the walls, get reflected and come back and this, the sound when it comes back, they affect the flame and the flame becomes unsteady. Now, the unsteady flame produces further sound which goes and comes back and in, in turn affects the flame further. So, this kind of sets up a feedback wherein the, the sound actually makes, uh, makes the flame unsteady and the unsteady flame makes sound. So, there is some kind of uh, feedback between these two which uh, uh, a positive feedback can be set in between the acoustic oscillations, the acoustic field and the combustion both reinforcing each other and this can actually lead to uh, this problem called combustion instability or thermoacoustic in, in, in instability and this is a very uh, 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 very serious problem. So, what happens is when the instability occurs, the oscillations grow uh, into very large amplitudes. Of course, they will uh, the amplitude of the oscillation would saturate the limit cycle uh, either a low amplitude limit cycle or it will be too loud that the hardware gets broken and, and so on. So, the oscillations actually you can see they grow and could uh, reach limit cycle, but uh, even if you have, uh, so you can have large amplitude oscillations which can for example, destroy something like a rocket engine or so on, but sometimes even if you have low amplitude oscillations, these oscillations they are sustained and they are over a very large period, you know these gas turbines which are producing power they operate for years and this low amplitude vibration itself can actually cause lot of fatigue to the, uh, uh, the plants or the uh, turbine blades or the pipes and so on and can cause crack. Here is for example, a cracked inlet to a gas turbine engine. So, you can have such failures in gas turbine engines and in aerospace programs we can actually have uh, really mission failures and so on. So, this have been uh, this phenomenon has been known for some time and uh, uh, the first uh, uh, engineered uh, stuff is the uh, uh, V on bomber which is called the bus bomber which was used in uh, World War II uh, by the Germans. This used a pulse jet engine, although we do not use this kind of uh, engines anymore. This is a demonstration of uh, uh, pulsating combustion or combustion instability, but here this was used in a sustained manner to make propulsive system. Although pulse combustors are still there, uh, now they find their applications in creating low carbon monoxide or low NOx burners. And uh, there is also a lot of interest now in thermoacoustic engines and refrigerators. So, what causes combustion instability? Combustion instability is a consequence of the interactions between flame flow and acoustics. So, there is uh, three pillars to it or three icons to it. There is flame dynamics that is how the flame responds to the flow and the oscillations. 
there is vortex dynamics or fluid mechanics which is affected by the combustion which is also affected by the acoustic oscillation. For example, uh, in, a, uh, in the case of a burner which has vortex shedding in it uh, in a bluff body stabilized burner or something, the acoustic field will surely affect the fluid mechanics, the fluid mechanics will uh, in turn affect the combustion and the combustion in turn affects the acoustic field. Similarly, the vortex dynamics acoustic the uh, affect the acoustic field. So, there is like a strong three way coupling that can uh, happen between the flame flow and acoustics which is what drives the thermoacoustic engines. So, uh, what, what causes instability? How does the energy come into the uh, acoustic field from this combustion? Uh, combustion adds energy to the acoustic field if it is in phase with the pressure oscillation. So, this was given by Lord Rayleigh in about more than 100 years back in the so called famous Rayleigh criteria. So, if you have a uh, uh, pressure wave which is there and if it can go on and on and on, but you know if you add heat when the pressure is at a maxima, then the amplitude of the wave will grow and then again you add. So, in, in th this is a hand waving crude example where we are talking about a instantaneous heat release and if this heat release happens at the pressure maxima, the amplitude of the oscillations can grow and you can keep on growing. Whereas, if you actually add heat when the pressure is at a minima, you can see that the uh, amplitude of the oscillations will actually uh, come down. Uh, opposite is also true, when you have oscillations uh, and you add uh, and if you remove heat at the, uh, uh, at the minima, then you can actually end up driving the oscillations uh, which, which is the opposite. So, in general combustion adds energy to the acoustic field if it is in phase with the pressure fluctuations. If the uh, combustion oscillations are out of phase with the acoustic field, then you actually have uh, a damping the uh, combustion will take away the acoustic energy. So, this is uh, called the Rayleigh criteria, it can be expressed mathematically as follows. The rate of change of acoustic energy uh, is uh, dependent on the amount of heat that is added that is, uh, 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 is proportional to the correlation between the acoustic pressure and the heat release minus the losses. So, this we will derive in the uh, subsequent lectures in a detailed uh, uh, manner. So, uh, if heat is added in phase with the acoustic field, the oscillations will grow. If it is added out of phase with the oscillations, the oscillations will decay. That is the, uh, that is the basic criteria. Now, acoustics affects the various processes in a combustion. Uh, you know, any time there is a uh, oscillation. For example, uh, if you have the pressure going up and down, that is the way acoustic oscillations happen. Pressure goes up and down, velocity goes up and down. When the pressure goes up and down, the pressure difference for example, that drives the uh, fuel flow rate will be also going up and down. So, if the pressure in the chamber goes up and down, the flow rate can also go up and down because the pressure uh, difference or the delta p which drives the flow rate is going up and down. So, there is really a, uh, uh, the, 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 there is uh, really a, uh, a uh, direct effect from the acoustic on the various acoustic field on the various process, but the thing is it is not instantaneous. It happens after a time delay. Let us say in this example of pressure oscillations affecting the flow rate. The, the pressure oscillation in the combustor they take certain time to travel to the injector and then the injector of oscillate flow at the injector has to oscillate then the fuel uh, and the air has to come to the combustor uh, where the burning happens. So, uh, there is a time delay because of the wave travelling here and then the flow travelling back to the, uh, uh, to the combustion zone. So, there is a time delay. So, the various process similarly there could be droplet evaporation in a combustor or a vortex shedding in a combustor. So, all these are various processes. So, uh, you can see if the pressure is uh, oscillation is uh, uh, shown by this pulse, uh, various process in the combustor uh, can be shown and they may be happening at a delay. So, if the delay is such that uh, it happens like a one cycle delay, then you know then uh, uh, it, it will be in phase with the next pressure pulse and your oscillation can, uh, can be driven. But if it is such that you are uh, not at if uh, uh, you, you are not in phase with the pressure oscillations let's say the delays are something else like in this process 2 3 and 4 then you do not contribute to growth of oscillations but here for example the process 1 is in uh, 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 is in phase with the pressure because the delay of the process 1 is same as the time period 
and then you can drive, uh, drive the oscillations. You can of course, uh, also have a um, um, complicated effect where you are delay maybe of the order of uh, uh, the harmonics of the uh, 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 combustor and then you could perhaps end up driving the uh, higher modes of the combustor. So, if the delay is just right, you are in trouble, you, your uh, oscillations can uh, be built up. And just to give an idea of the uh, time scales involved, so you can see the acoustic period of 100 hertz oscillations is of the order of uh, uh, 0.1 second, a uh, acoustic period of 500 hertz oscillation is the order of 0.002 seconds, chemical ignition delay is the order of 0 0.001 second, uh, if you have equivalence ratio of 0 0.7, if you have equivalence ratio of 1, you can see it is the order of 0 0.003 seconds. If you look at the convection, convection is a slow phenomena, uh, it happens at much lower speeds, it is at the speed of the flow, but nevertheless. Uh, the distance over which the convection happens is also very small. So, the acoustic uh, field is spread over the entire combustor which is of the order of meter or meters, where the convection for example, from the fuel injected to the flame zone will happen over uh, 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter. So, although the speed is lower, the distance over which the convective disturbance have to travel is also much, much, much lower. So, therefore, there you end up having a parity of time scale, although the speeds are very disparate because of the change in the length scales. So, a convection of a disturbance of uh, 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 10 meter per second over a distance of 10 centimeter is of the order of 0.01 second, which happens to be same as that of 100 hertz oscillation. So, if 100 hertz oscillation uh, is there and you have a uh, disturbance uh, of 10 meter per second traveling over 10 centimeter, you, you, you are having a parity of time scale and you can end up having instability. So, convection of a disturbance over 10 centimeter at 50 meter per second happens at 0 0.002 second, which is in line with this 500 hertz oscillation. The evaporation of a 10 micron droplet uh, hydrocarbon droplet is of the order of 0 0.003 seconds, which is uh, slightly uh, uh, shorter time scale. So, it could uh, work with a higher frequency. Uh, a 50 micron uh, 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 droplet takes 0 0.08 seconds. Uh, so, it depends on the size of the droplet, what is the time scale involved in evaporation and therefore, it could uh, interact with the appropriate frequency, if the length scale uh, of the combustor is giving that kind of frequency. Now, prop propagation of acoustic disturbance of 10 centimeter or over 10 centimeter 330 meter per second is 0 0.003 seconds, that is very short, but uh, you know the uh, in acoustics the length scale that matters the length of the combustor, which is of the order of 1 meter or 2 meters. So, then the length uh, time scale that is involved is 0 0.01 second that kind of thing. Uh, liquid jet breakup that is another thing. There are so many phenomena that happen and each have time scales and when the acoustic time scale come close to the time scale of this process and, and, and the delay of the process is of the order of the period of the acoustics, then we are uh, prone to tending, uh, getting instability. So, typical instability evolution looks like this. You have uh, uh, amplitude, uh, small amplitude oscillations which grow, which keep on growing and then they reach some kind of limit cycle. So, the oscillations first grow, they grow very rapidly, they grow exponentially, but then uh, they uh, tail off, the amplitudes do not uh, grow further, because the as the oscillations grow, you are entering a non-linear regime and non-linear oscillations, they tend to attain limit cycle. And uh, they are also uh, quite tonal that is you have a uh, crisp frequencies uh, occurring, uh, but you have a very crisp uh, fast Fourier transforms if you look at it and the well defined frequencies as opposed to a broadband sound. Broadband sound does happen in combustion when the instability does not happen that is generally referred to as roar or combustion noise and so on, but when the instabilities occur you have uh, uh, very precise uh, frequencies 100 hertz or 200 hertz, sometimes many harmonics also occur, but they are clear tones, you know like tone would be something like you know when, when you play a flute you have crisp sound or when you play a whistle you have crisp sound, that kind of tonal sound is what is usually there in uh, instability. So, combustion responds to the perturbations in flow and acoustics and in turn drives this. So, here is a, uh, a picture of uh, various phenomena that occur in a combustor which I have borrowed from Professor Polifke of TU Munich. So, you have heat release fluctuations and heat release fluctuation acts as a volume source of sound. So, they act as volume source of sound, create acoustic waves and there are so many things can happen. The acoustic waves could affect the air or the uh, uh, fuel supply 
and uh, you can up uh, you can uh, if, if you have a uh, pressure oscillations it can actually change the flow rate of the fuel because delta p changes if you have a air flow oscillations your flow rate of uh, 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 air itself can change because the velocity is oscillating and this can cause for example equivalence ratio fluctuations because you are having a, uh, the uh, fuel flow rate oscillate and the air flow rate oscillate. So, the equivalence ratio itself is fluctuating which will lead to heat release fluctuations lead to further uh, volume uh, source of sound which will keep building the feedback. You can have coherent structures which can modulate the heat release and the heat release can occur at certain uh, periodic manner and uh, this modulation will make the heat release fluctuate. All this is complicated by the coupling with uh, uh, turbulent, uh, turbulent flow and uh, uh, the flame wrinkling uh, occurs and so on. And we can also have entropy waves which are also driving the sound because when the pressure waves they come and go into a um, convergent divergent nozzle or something uh, where the flow is accelerating the uh, uh, sorry the, the uh, if you have hot spots from the uh, combustor which is like the entropy waves they come into the nozzle and, 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 uh, and uh, go through this accelerating flow they actually get reflected as uh, acoustic pressure waves. So, you can have combustion instability happening by this uh, entropy, uh, entropy waves which uh, interact with the accelerating flow. We can have vortex shedding uh, uh, driving heat release. Now, why does vortex shedding happen in a combustor? In a typical combustor, uh, let us say in a gas turbine combustor, you want to have flow happening at Mach number 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 0 .2 and the flame speeds, laminar flame speed of hydrocarbons are typically of the order of meter per second or smaller even if you have turbulent flow you can okay, get it up to a few meters. But nevertheless we cannot hold the flame at uh, 100 meter per second and so on. So, then we have to have some kind of flame holding mechanism. So, a typical flame holding mechanism would be to use a backward facing step and the one would be to use a um, swirler and you have vortex breakdown and the research there can be a central toroidal recirculation zone where you can uh, hold the flame or you can have like an afterburner. Uh, we can have V gutters where the flame is held. So, it, it uh, all this is a uh, mechanism for flame go flame holding basically some kind of flow separation happens and in this separated flow in, in this recirculating flow there will be hot radicals which are uh, there at low velocities and these radicals help to hold the flame. So, in a practical combustor you have to have some kind of flame holding mechanism either in the form of a, uh, a solar which creates vortex breakdown or a backward facing step or a V gutter or, or, or bluff body or something like that. Now, anytime you have this kind of thing for example, if you have blackwood facing a step you actually have vortices being shed at this step and the vortex shedding is a periodic phenomena. Now, you have a fuel air mixture coming typically fuel will be injected very close to the step. So, you have a fuel air mixture coming it comes with the vortex it periodically comes and sheds and uh, you know. So, the burning gets modulated by this vortex shedding same thing can happen in a, uh, 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 a bluff body combustor where this vortex shedding the vortex shedding can uh, periodically modulate the uh, uh, modulate the burning. In addition uh, you can if you are, if you are using a, uh, a swirl flow what can happen is the uh, the swirl flow can have instability such as the precessing vortex core and, 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 and so on. So, the precessing vortex core happens at uh, it precesses at certain frequency. And, and therefore, the instability can happen at that frequency. So, in general the combustion the fuel air packet comes with this vortex and burns and therefore, vortex shedding can drive heat release oscillation. So, this is one possible mechanism with which heat release oscillations uh, uh, fluctuations can uh, give uh, can happen in heat release uh, fluctuations in, uh, in acoustics can give rise to heat release oscillations. Now, what happens is when there is sound and vortex shedding the vortex shedding can get synchronized you get locked to the acoustic field and, and, and we will look at this mechanism in more detail later in the course. So, this kind of coupling between vortex shedding and, uh, and the acoustics and the heat release that gives rise to instability. Another mechanism is the entropy mode. So, the entropy waves the combustion has uh, hot packets of high or, or temperature spots coming and they come into the nozzle through which flow is accelerating. So, when this entropy uh, waves come they get reflected back as pressure and so you do have pressure oscillations uh, coming back and they can come here and again you can get a feedback loop. So, you can in addition to the uh, pure thermoacoustic mode which you should search for, but you can also have entropy modes which, uh, uh, which can also drive 
uh, oscillations uh, in a thermoxy engine, but this necessarily uh, this happens in engines where the flow is choked. Uh, so, therefore, entropy mode both the entropy mode and thermoacoustic mode should be accounted for and one should check for these things. Now, I will give uh, an example of uh, another example I was mentioning earlier that when this uh, uh, lean premix free vaporized burners were, uh, uh, were built as a uh, uh, solution for the uh, acid drain that is you wanted to make low NOx burner. So, we wanted to uh, you know you, you want to pre vaporize the fuel and mix it and you basically have pre mixed combustion uh, and, and so on. Uh, this developed lot of uh, instabilities when this was brought in uh, operation. Uh, what happens is uh, in, in a simple physical terms you have some kind of fluctuations here they come here uh, and, and the pressure oscillations cause a fluctuating pressure difference or a delta p. So, the flow rate oscillates. So, when the pressure in the combustor is low uh, a, a rarefaction wave comes here and therefore, the pressure delta p increases. So, the flow rate increases when the compression wave comes the delta p decreases and the flow rate comes down. So, you have a oscillating uh, uh, flow rate. So, a oscillating flow rate can actually lead to oscillate, oscillating flow rate of fuel can lead to oscillating heat release. Similarly, when the uh, oscillations come here the air flow through the air duct uh, uh, will oscillate. So, you have both simultaneously fuel flow oscillations as well as the air flow oscillations which in turn leads to some kind of equivalence ratio fluctuations. So, you have uh, pockets of fuel air mixtures they come here and they are coming uh, uh, of course, there is a time delay from the time in which acoustic waves are coming here and this mixture is convected here. So, uh, th there is um, some kind of uh, modulation of the equivalence ratio which results in the modulation of heat release rate and this can in turn get in phase with the acoustic oscillations and lead to large amplitude uh, oscillation. So, this uh, was a uh, big problem in the 90s when people developed this uh, 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 burners which were to operate in the uh, lean limit. In the lean limit the combustion uh, the combustion got very unstable. So, you had to go away from the lean limit to make it uh, stabilize. So, equivalence ratio fluctuations are a big factor in driving instabilities in lean premixed pre vaporized uh, burners in summary. Uh, if you take a candle and you put it in front of your woofer you can try it at home just take a simple candle and put it in front of your woofer and, and let, let us say play some music in the woofer you can see actually the candle flickers you know it will respond to high frequency also, but in low frequency you can observe it with your eyes. So, similarly if you take a Bunsen burner flame and put a woofer in next to it and you will actually see flame front wrinkle. So, uh, you know the oscillations and they cause uh, the flames to wrinkle these are pictures borrowed from Schuller of Ecole Central Paris uh, and uh, sorry these uh, wrinkles happen and the wrinkles propagate up. And when uh, in pre mixed flame the heat release depends on the amount of uh, flow that is going through because there is a flame and pre mixed uh, uh, reactants in the uh, reactants in the air oxidizer is coming through the flame. So, the amount of heat release depends on the surface area. So, when the wrinkles the surface area is oscillating. So, when the surface area is oscillating due to wrinkles your heat release fluctuation heat release itself is oscillating causing heat release flu uh, fluctuation. So, you put a tube around the uh, this Bunsen burner you will hear very nice tonal uh, sound. So, it is a uh, very simple uh, device, but you can actually get very nice uh, oscillating uh, acoustic feel very nice acoustic feel. And, uh, 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 this is yet another mechanism for uh, 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 making uh, thermoacoustic oscillations. So, uh, in summary flame kinematics is an important mechanism of instability in premix burners that is the flame wrinkles with the oscillations and the wrinkles cause the flame area to fluctuate and when the flame area is fluctuating the heat release oscillations fluctuate. Mm. So, how do we analyze thermoacoustic instabilities? So, we have to write some kind of equations and we have to solve them. So, how do you study fluid mechanics? We write conservation of mass, momentum and energy. So, acoustics is some kind of fluid mechanics, acoustic is a branch of fluid mechanics this is also derived uh, from in the same way as you study fluid mechanics except that in we have to write the unsteady equation. So, we write the unsteady conservation equations first for mass, then for momentum and then for energy and then we uh, work with these equations and derive a wave equation. So, classically we linearize the equation 
and then we do some algebraic manipulations and derive the wave equation. So, in a typical uh, classical wave equation uh, uh, this right hand side term is 0 that is d squared p by d t squared minus c squared times d squared p by d x squared equal to 0 that is a classical wave equation that has been studied over and over over the last few hundred years. Uh, now, you have some kind of term uh, on the right hand side uh, this is a, a simplistic form, but here uh, this term on the right hand side uh, models the uh, heat release uh, from combustion. So, <coughs> now the issue is how to model this heat release. So, you have to have some kind of modeling of the flame and the effect of acoustics on the flame that causes the unsteady heat release and that has to be input into this wave equation and then you have to solve for it. And how do you solve for it? Uh, typically uh, in practical combustors it is solved using what is called network models. So, in network models you have uh, uh, you, you, you have a typical combustor as a combustor system has various components like uh, fuel supply, uh, air supply, uh, burner, flame and, uh, and, and combustor. So, uh, you write equations for each of this. So, you have some kind of input output relation for the fuel supply uh, which is described in terms of some kind of transfer function. So, you have transfer function for each of these elements and you put them together we will learn this in the later part of the course and then we write a series of equations together and typically these equations are uh, linear equations. So, we then take these linear equations and solve for the eigenvalues of the network model and if the eigenvalues are uh, uh, complex then we can look at the imaginary part of the eigenvalues and then see if your combustor is going to be unstable or stable easier said than done, but we will go over it in the later part of the course. So, uh, if the imaginary if the frequency is complex as I have described a complex eigenvalue happens then you have a, a the complex frequency will have a real part and the imaginary part the real part. So, if you express omega as 2 pi f plus i times alpha. So, this f denotes the periodic component of the oscillations and this alpha denotes the growth rates as we will see now. So, if you write p prime which is the pressure fluctuations as p hat e power i omega t. So, this we can substitute this expression here for omega as p hat times e power minus i into 2 pi f plus i alpha t which can be recast as p hat times e power minus 2 pi f t. So, you can see there is a periodic component and then there is a so, here is i. So, it is periodic there is no i here. So, this is exponential growth or decay. So, this term in blue that is the periodic component which is what the real part of frequency indicates and the imaginary part of frequency indicates uh, the exponential growth or decay. So, uh, in summary we can solve for the eigenvalue and look at the imaginary part of the eigenvalue and look at the growth rate and if the growth rate is indicating that the eigenvectors are growing exponentially then you are in trouble because the uh, there is instability if the uh, eigenvectors are decaying if all the eigenvectors are decaying exponentially there is no problem you are going to be stable, but if one of the eigenvectors is <coughs> growing exponentially then uh, you have instability or you are prone to instability. So, this is the uh, standard way of studying uh, uh, combustion instability uh, using a network model different people call it by different terms this. So, we looked at how uh, we, we looked at how instabilities occur now we see whether we can suppress these instabilities so, how can you suppress combustion driven oscillations. So, first the two ways you can suppress one is to eliminate the coupling between the heat release and acoustic field. So, I said that the instabilities happen because the acoustic field is coming in phase with the combustion you have a positive feedback. So, if we can eliminate the coupling between the heat release and acoustic field that is a simple way of uh, eliminating the thermoacoustic oscillations. Now, the easier said than done, but it is quite difficult uh, and how do we do this. So, I mentioned about the time scales involved in various processes. So, let us say we have a injector which responds to acoustic oscillation and the characteristic times are matching with the acoustic frequency. So, either you can change the acoustic time scale that means changing the length of the combustor which may be often very difficult because it is a big thing and it is already built you cannot change it. So, then if you want to change the diameter of the droplets uh, or if you change the nozzle and you change the diameter of the nozzle then you are actually altering the time scale of the uh, droplet evaporation. So, in this case that would be a easier solution or uh, in the LPP burners that I described uh, you have the time delay depends on the distance between the injector and the combustion zone. So, one possibility is to change the location of the injector or alter the injection velocities or um, uh, change the flow speeds. 
So, all this will alter the time delay. So, we have to come up with some way to disrupt the coupling between the heat release and the acoustic field. And typically, we have an idea of the time delays and you alter the time delays and the coupling will get disrupted. And uh, uh, typically, it is easier to change the uh, um, uh, injector or something rather than change the combustor itself. So, this is the, uh, um, uh, the, the this is the way of. So, when the oscillations you make sure that the oscillations do not come at all. Uh, now, in order to practice this approach even before the combustor is designed that means, you have to have good stability analysis tools. So, if you have them you can check for instabilities even before you fabricate the combustor. If you do not have them and if instabilities are happening then you check for the time scales and alter the time scales. The next possibility is to have damping. So, let you can take the attitude that let the oscillations be there and I will take them out by I will suppress them by absorbing them. So, it is uh, like in you know in, in, in the studios you have uh, uh, perforated walls which will absorb the sound. Uh, so, you can have perforated liners they use that in gas turbine engines or in solid rocket motors uh, you have lot of aluminum in it. It serves a two fold purpose the aluminum actually uh, burns to form alumina and uh, aluminum has gives a uh, very high specific impulse. So, the performance of the rocket is improved, but alumina also serves a very important other purpose that is these alumina which are uh, uh, which is molten and it, uh, droplets which are uh, moving they actually take out the sound energy. So, the droplets actually go back and forth with the oscillations and take absorb the sound field and, and that is how they move actually. So, when you have oscillations and the droplets are moving back and forth they, they are moving they are taking the energy from the sound field. If there are significant amount of alumina <coughs> then a lot of acoustic field can be absorbed. So, this is a, uh, a classical practice used in uh, space rockets, uh, rockets are used to get to space uh, to make sure that instabilities do not happen. In fact, typical uh, rockets have something of the order of 18 percentage aluminum loading. Uh, although in missiles you sometimes may not be able to add aluminum because you do not want to have uh, aluminum in it. So, that you can uh, avoid the signature then those uh, rockets will be more prone to instability. Uh, you can have uh, other mechanisms like putting baffles and so on. So, you have a region of high acoustic velocity and you put a baffle. So, that you take out that velocity maxima. So, you, you disrupt uh, uh, the acoustic field uh, somehow and take away the energy out. Uh, so, th this would be. Uh, so, the, uh, like I said the two ways of removing the acoustic field one is to make sure that it does not generate by uh, disrupting the coupling between the acoustic field and the combustion. The other thing is let sound be produced, but we will absorb all of it by using damping material. Uh, another uh, strategy is using distributed time delays if the various combustors uh, like in annular combustor there will be so many burners and we can have time delays associated with each of them to be different. So, that you they do not act all together in big bang, but they are all act with distributed time delays. So, you do not get a very strong acoustic field because you have the effect being dispersed or, or distributed. So, there are various uh, ways of removing the instability. Typically, in practice uh, instability occurs and then only people notice it although we are trying uh, to design for combustors which are without instability. And so, some people uh, the, we call them resident black magicians who are who are called in when there is a instability problems and, and, and fix it. And this uh, and then you will do some ad hoc measure and fix it. And then uh, you know what is wrong with this anytime you change something when the instability comes and you do something to remove the instability it takes a toll on the performance. And, and lot of combustors most of, or, or really large number of combustors have uh, a lot of instability problems, but the companies uh, um, which make them they do not like to speak about it because it is very bad publicity. So, this is seldom talked about. Now, the last part is about active control. So, can we use some idea like anti sound to suppress the instability. So, you must have seen both speakers and so on where you put them on and you sit in an aeroplane you do not hear anything or in factories you have speakers which actually cancel the sound and you reduce the amplitude of the sound. So, can we have some such concept in thermoacoustics where you are um, having a active control. So, let the sound be produced but actively uh, suppress it rather than having a passive control. Uh, so, far people prefer the engineers prefer passive control because they are more robust. The problem with passive control is each measure works for some kind of frequency range not for all frequency range. Whereas, the uh, active control should be able to in principle uh, suppress any sound although uh, it is far from being deployed in the industrial sense. So, it, a, a, a simple 
uh, scheme given by McManus, Poinson, Candle in their uh, very famous 1993 paper in progress in uh, energy and combustion sciences is uh, given below. So, a combustor you measure the pressure in the combustor using a microphone or a piece of electric actuator, then you pass it through a time delay generator and amplifier. So, you amplify the signal, but you also delay it and you then feed the signal to an actuator and the actuator actually introduces let us say velocity fluctuations. You can have actuator simple simplistic actuator would be a loudspeaker. So, which will uh, diaphragm will go back and forth and it will introduce a velocity fluctuation in the combustor and this will be introduced such that the you originally had an unstable combustor, but you uh, you you put this fluctuation such that it cancels the effect of the instability. So you you had originally unstable system, but you're actually pushing the uh, unstable eigenvalues to stable eigenvalues. So uh, you you make this actuator vibrate such that the net system is uh, uh, stable. So this is the uh, concept in the very elementary sense. Uh, uh, this is very simple to say, but it's quite hard to uh, uh, do it in practice. Uh, in in reality, the actual combustors. Employ that employ and an uh, active control of combustion instability as very complicated mechanism. It's a very complex study by itself, and it's very far from being perfected. But we'll take a look at it at the in the course, and uh, so we can use active control to suppress the instability. Uh, the very uh, various forms of very sophisticated controllers that are used to suppress the uh, thermoacoustic instabilities. Uh, in reality, we don't put loudspeakers in the combustor because you know you can imagine if you put a loudspeaker in a combustor, the loudspeaker will burn off because it's a very hostile environment in the combustor. So what you do is typically you can have a, a secondary fuel injection, which is pulsed. You can uh, have now you have very high bandwidth fuel injectors that pulse fuel in an unsteady manner to the combustion chamber, and you 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 send the secondary fuel. It produces a secondary heat release. So the phase of this fuel pulses is arranged such that you, you have the uh, secondary heat release fluctuations. These fluctuations are out of phase with the acoustic field and you can actually show that very small amount of secondary heat release fluctuations can actually uh, uh, produce serious amount of uh, serious amount of damping in the system. Uh, so, in summary uh, uh, the combustion instability uh, in summary combustion instability is very dangerous with catastrophic consequences you can have. Uh, the whole engine being destroyed or you can have uh, um, you know slow and uh, slow failure by uh, a fatigue. So, we saw that uh, combustion instability happens between the uh, uh, because the coupling between the heat release and the sound and this positive feedback is what is causing the uh, combustion instability or thermoacoustic instability. In fact, this is one reason why we study acoustics. So, we have to have a good knowledge of acoustics because what is involved is sound that is produced by combustion, how it interacts with the combustion itself. So we have to study two two things. That's why the first half of the course deals with acoustics. How does sound propagate? And then we have to study how combustion generates sound. That is how the uh, acoustic feeds back with the combustion and produces. How the, how does the combustion produce acoustic field? Uh, we discussed various mechanism in different combustors. We have a uh, different mechanisms that include, uh, uh, for example, vortex shedding, entropy fluctuations, flame kinematics, uh, droplet uh, evaporation, uh, unsteady droplet evaporation, unsteady droplet motion. The, the various different mechanisms that cause combustion instability. And we saw that when the combustion is in phase with the pressure, so the pressure oscillations affect the combustion fluctuation, and there's a delay. And then if the combustion oscillations are in phase with the acoustic field phase with the acoustic pressure to be specific you get uh, the onset of instabilities and uh, we saw that these uh, instabilities can be analyzed using the so called uh, network models which are uh, what is used in practical uh, industrial uh, uh, burners and we use uh, we can use passive control of instability which is what is uh, used in the uh, often in practice that you uh, that is you either do something to damp the oscillations by putting some mufflers or, or, or liners and so on or you do something to the uh, um, injector or the fuel, air, fuel location or something and uh, affect the disrupt the coupling or we can also have a very sophisticated active control where you use um, fine actuators which are uh, uh, driven by controllers which can actually affect the sound. So, in, in summary 
I have uh, given an uh, uh, introduction to uh, uh, what is combustion drone oscillations and how it occurs in uh, propulsive systems and uh, industrial combustors and, and so on. So, then about 20 lectures we will have uh, on acoustics, which is how we explain, uh, we derive the equations for acoustic field, we study the solutions and, and so on. And then the next 20 lectures will be on how combustion produces produces sound. So, in the next class we will speak about, we will start with acoustics, we will speak about the very elements of acoustics and then we go on to deriving the equations of the acoustic field, deriving the wave equations and the uh, uh, solutions for it. So, that is the end of lecture 1. Thank you.